Hello, I am David Daniel Jr. bringing to you the topic about the ways of controlling insect pests. You know, in during our childhood, there was a, a song before that we are singing. It says, "Planting rice is never fun," but you know, having rice to eat is more fun than having no rice to eat. That's why. We should study and we should develop our interest on producing rice. So we must know the different insect pests in rice so that we, we know how to get rid of them and we know when to control them. In controlling insect pests, Use of chemicals should always be the last resource. Recourse. Visit the farm regularly to detect presence of insect pests. If negligible, apply natural ways of controlling either biologi biological or, uh, or organic method. A combination of the methods below should be considered. You can see uh, in, our, in our screen, you say number one biological control it is done by promoting the existence of natural enemies of rice insect pests these natural enemies can be grouped into number one spiders spiders which eat uh, any insect pests they can catch of course they, these spiders uh, make wave spider's wave and any flying insects that can uh, be trapped into the spider's web can be caught in it by this spider another is insect predators which eats many kinds of pests of course the bigger pests catches the small pests no? uh, the, because this bigger uh, insects uh, has uh, co control over the small pests. Number three, insect parasites, which it's only one of a few kinds of pests, pathogens, organism, which in fact different kind of pests. No? There are uh, many kinds or some pests in our farmland that uh, are belong to this kind of insect parasite. Second to bio biological control, we have using pest resistant varieties. In the market, we can find this one, resistant varieties. They, they, they are, there are many varieties that are available there. By incorporating insect resistant genes in high yielding varieties of rice, like the new varieties offered by DA and other government agencies. No? So this insect uh, or pest resistant varieties, if they are the one that is being that is uh, being plant in our rice field, no? they will uh, they will reduce the damage. They will reduce the effect caused by this pest uh, that are chewing, uh, uh, sucking and disturbing the growth of our rice. Another is the cultural and chemical control of insect pests or of rice with their nature of attack and damage are shown in this case below. So there are about 100 species of insects that infest rice plant. Now imagine so many. However, only 15 of these are major significance and are regularly occurring some are most destructive insects some of the most destructive insects are of our rice wool maggot rice caseworm common armyworms cutworms rice steam borer rice leaf polder green leaf hoppers brown plant hoppers and the newly discovered black bugs in some part of the country However, now, this pest uh, can be 
eradicated or this pest can be eliminated no? with uh, what, what we call cultural or chemical control and with the help of spiders no? by having this uh, by using this biological control not uh, not removing not destroying not killing this biological uh, or this uh, insects that can help farmers will help much the farmer in uh, uh, removing or uh, uh, catching some small uh, insects that are being eaten by these bigger insects. Uh, uh, we go now to the major insect pests of rice. No? Uh, number one is the rice hole maggot. In, uh, we, they call that ngilaw tipagay or ngilaw titaltalo in Locano and langaw bukid in Tagalog. The adult fly is dull grayish. It is attracted to newly transplanted rice no? with the standing water. No? So it is uh, advisable or being advised to farmers that the uh, after planting do not uh, do not put much water instead after planting immediately after planting uh, drain the excess water from the field uh, so that uh, their the rice no? uh, the rice can start to grow no by having this, that oxygen in the uh, the uh, the soil, no, and it is not good that rice will be soaked or uh, will be water re regularly. No, uh, it is needed that uh, once or twice a week. No, it is uh, dra uh, the water in the par farm will be drained so that uh, more tillers will be grown no? but after tillers will grow no? uh, then it is again time for flooding or putting more water so that uh, grasses will not gr grow no? to, to control the population of grass so it says here that eggs are laid singly on either sur surface of the leaf Incubation ranges from two to four days. No? The, the newly hatched maggots migrate to the unopened central leaves where the larva or feed on the inner margins of the developing leaves. So it is important that uh, as a farmer, we should always diagnose our rice so that we know when uh, our rice are affected by this whole maggot or they are free from uh, infection of this whole maggot. No? The damaged areas very visible. Uh, pupation takes place during or takes place outside the feeding stocks and lasts for 7 to 10 days. Egg to adult stage normally extends 26 to 28 days in, in twistation. Generally of course from seedling to maximum tillering stage when there are uh, more uh, tillers comes out so that uh, uh, going to the vegetative stage. Next we have the rice caseworm or local, tem local name Kutalo. The adult moot is white with wings that are marked with a few light brown or to black speaks uh, uh, and two to three dull brownish yellow bands located below the margin. No, you can see the figure 27. Uh, eggs are laid uh, in one to two adjacent rows in the lower surface of the leaves or on the leaf shelf near the water surface. After two to four days, eggs hatch into fail cream minute larva. The caseworm derives its name from the larva habit of wrapping itself in a section of a leaf and attaching itself to the rice plant. It feeds on the upper portion of the leaf. The larva undergoes five instars. No? It changes uh, its leaf case after its morning. Then, third, we have common armyworm. 
local name Arabas no uh, they consume uh, large parts of the leaves if this uh, uh, pest cannot be controlled so uh, army worms infestation infestations occurs sporadically out outbreaks are characterized by the sudden appearance of larvae in the immense number causing severe damage before they are detected the adult is nocturnal and appears to be pale brick hmm? red to brown it has a hairy body covered with dark specks and patches the eggs are laid in clusters between the lip shield and the stems they hatch from seven to nine days so as you can see the development of this insects is very fast so so there there is no uh, time to be uh, uh, there's no time to be uh, consumed in other activities or used in other activities if you are a farmer there is a need that from day to day day after day uh, we should go in our farm, visit our field, uh, specific, uh, particularly our, uh, our, our our rice. Now, if they are affected, because the development from larva, from egg larva uh, to other stages of uh, pest is very fast. Now, the uh, number four is cutworm. Local names tarip tip. Uh, the Arabas. It is a polypagos insect that feeds on many plant species. It is also a very common pest of various agricultural crops. The four wings of the adult insects are purple, purple brown, with numerous spots and light colored lines with hin, hin wings. Larvae are brown, black, and thoracic segments have one to two dark spots near the base of the legs the eggs are round with ridged surface fairly white and laid in the clusters of 300 covered with short brownish hair on the surface of the lip adults come out during night time this insect usually attacks rice plants at the seedling stage no? so be very careful they are dangerous they attack and destroy our plants during night time next we have steam borers local name rusuk considered the most serious pest of rice no? steam borers are regular occurrence of wide distribution no? they are serious most serious pest of rice because they 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 eat the heart or the center lip of the rice no? so when the rice uh, bear uh, the rice panicle comes out it is dead white because of this uh, attack of steam borers steam borers are uh, comes comes out when water the 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 soil is covered with water and goes down when the soil is don't have water so we must very uh, we must be very uh, intelligent enough when we spray them or when eradicate them we should know uh, how to uh, get rid of them they reduce dealers even on resistant varieties and are difficult to control with insecticide no? this pest occurs in all rice environment and are generally abundant during or toward the end of the rainy season they infest rice plants from seedling stage to maturity their damage to the rice plants results in dead hearts no? when the central lip hole is affected and white heads uh, when base of the panicle are severe no? okay this uh, this portion is affected by stem borers no? stem uh, stem borers so he, here they are no? destroying uh, from the, the 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 lower part of the rice no? going up 
So uh, this here the, uh, this is how they look. Dead heart caused by stem borers. Here is the this dead heart. Here is this stem borer. Now number six we have rice leaf polder. The local name balbalkot igas nga aglokot tibulong. No? Leaf polders have increased in importance in areas where rice is heavily fertilized and planted during dry and wet season. The adult have shiny light brown wings and dark broad margins and two to three vertical dark stripes. The larvae are long yellowish green and brown head. The eggs are oval yellowish white and lead rows of 10 to 12 each arranged uh, linearly along the midrib of either surface of leaves. They attack rice plants from seedling to flowering stage. So, here are the illustration of it. Then, next, we have green leaf hoppers. Hmm? Or we, they call that sup sup or verde asupsup or verde ngosong kabayo the green leaf hoppers uh, generally feed on the leaves and upper part of the plant they are vectors of virus organism and causing tungro and yellow dwarf disease so we should control them because they bring virus that will cause tungro to the uh, rice field or to the farm obiposition occurs two to three days after emergence, egg masses are laid on the upper surface of the lip blade of, or lip shield. No? Incubation takes 7 to 8 days. The nymphs undergo 5 st uh, in stars in the 14 to 19 days before they become adults. They attack rice plants from seedling to boating stage. Boating stage when they start to bear or uh, what, you call, uh, what you call this? Conception. Aginaw, Tilocano. Now, next we have brown plant hoppers, local name, color, kape, asepsep. Okay. The brown plant hoppers na, infects the lower parts of the plant. Brown, brown plant hoppers are two kinds the wing and the wingless types. So, wingless and the wing. Na, type uh, damage known as hopper burn. This is characterized by gradual yellowing followed by sudden drying of the plants forming circular pots just in the fields. No? Then next we have the rice bugs here. No? Sometimes if you can hold that one it's uh, not good in order. Rice bug or dangaw in Locano, this pest is a major problem where rice is grown continuously in rice in all its states of growth. Both nymphs and adults are distinguished by their peculiar bug odor. Mm. They are phototropic and remain active during early morning and when sunlight is weak. Mm. So, uh, here is the insects and their damages to rice uh, plant okay we have we have here insects of rice nature of attack damage and control column a uh, uh, insect pests the uh, column b nature of attack and damage and column c uh, preventive and control measures on the second row a whole maggot the and uh, here the attack the the, uh, the nature of attack in larva and preventive and control measures of this kind of insects so uh, they can attack but we can also prevent and control these insects in that attacks and destroy our rice field the rice case worm army worm uh, so here they, here they are. You should only uh, be particular with these insects now and their, their nature of attack and how to control them so that we could minimize the, the effect or the, the uh, uh, destroy 
the 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 defect the, the their effect and their disturbance hmm? their destroying capacity will be uh, minimized uh, the next uh, we have here the pictures hmm, that symbolize or illustrates the different insects that can be found in farm some of them are not uh, are not dangerous or some of them uh, do not uh, destroy our rice but uh, help us get rid of this uh, harmful insects the uh, this side this side is a friendly insects so you can see butter you can see uh, spider dragonfly was beetle uh, dino. so if the, uh, these insects are present in your farm uh, you should not get angry of them uh, but be happy because they are protecting our field but if these harmful insects are present in our farm now uh, we should start eliminating them by uh, uh, by using um, insecticide or other uh, ways of controlling them next we have uh, you have seen the harmful and the friendly insecticide the list of friendly and harmful insects integrated pest management this method of pest management could minimize the use of insecticide for sustainable environment so that uh, we can maintain a friendly environment free from uh, free from uh, dangerous uh, odor of air free from affected uh, insects that will also harm us if they get uh, uh, if they get touch of this uh, mist through IPM unnecessary, unnecessary application of insecticide is minimized no? uh, which can mean saving for the farmer no? now uh, insecticides are getting higher in price because of minimal use of insecticide there is less pollution and therefore survival of natural enemies is encouraged uh, especially these friendly insects that could help farmers constant monitoring of visual counting use of sweep nets and damage assessment is necessary to determine if use of insecticide is already recommended when to apply insecticide so you should observe this one uh, growth stage seedling insect pests uh, that uh, are prone or may affect our seedlings are caseworms, armyworms, and cutworms. So spray insecticide when there are 50 percent of the leaves damaged. No? Why? Because uh, the seedling stage of uh, rice is not yet uh, a problem. No? Uh, so you can allow the insects to destroy the leaves to up to 50 percent mm. but during vegetative stage let us observe this insect pest whole maggot green leaf hoppers brown leaf hoppers stem borers and leaf borders no? and they, uh, we should not allow more than 30 percent leaf damage or cut why because vegetative stage is one of the important stages of rice wherein they develop uh, they are uh, preparing for uh, uh, conception or development the voting stage uh, so we should not allow more than 30 percent leaves no, da damage or cut uh, let, let us uh, be uh, informed that uh, the leaves of the plants are the uh, place where they manufacture their food through the aid of the sunlight so uh, let us protect the leaves of this uh, rice during vegetative stage 
after panicle initiation means uh, before uh, the uh, panicle will will uh, after the panicle initiation or the, the panel com comes out already the insects that are uh, in our uh, plant are the brown plant hoppers and green leaf hoppers now so spray insecticide when there is a 20 percent uh, 20 percent hopper heel or one hopper per tiller no none uh, on green leaf hoppers none in the areas with rtb no? now uh, they say that prevention is better than control no so at this stage panicle initiation if this panicle of price will be destroyed by these insects of course lesser yield is expected so if we allow uh, insects to to destroy 50 percent during their seedlings no we should not allow them to destroy those th that same uh, percentage during panicle initiation or after panicle initiation because it will disturb and destroy uh, much of our harvest if we allow them now uh, we go to, we go to the uh, other pests so pests of the rice field is not only the insects we could uh, we should uh, uh, we can also pound other pests like the golden apple snail the golden apple snail feed on the parts of the uh, seedlings at seedling stage no? because they are still small and soft so this golden kohol eat uh, part of this uh, seedling until they are consumed and cannot survive so we should get rid of them no? golden snail is one of the delicacies enjoyed by farmers before but now in uh, it is a recognized rice pest it produces numerous pinkish eggs no masses visibly seen on leaves Libis, no? Libis means your the uh, the soil, no, near the 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 rice field that separates uh, other rice field, which usually hatches from nine to twelve days. This pest is destructive during the early growth stage of rice plants, fourteen days from sowing to twenty days after transplanting at seedling stage. The pest feeds on the vegetative parts of young rice plants and could wipe out plants in a given area overnight that's how that's how dangerous they are so we should not just look at them get fun of uh, watching them but let us start if we, if we don't have chemical uh, spray to uh, control them we can use uh, our hand to uh, pick them up no? one by one put them in a sack and store them to a dry land no? seal the sack and store them into dry land uh, there they are until they will die no? population of golden uh, apple snail can be prevented by the following hand pick observe cleanliness and sanitation if cultural management is not feasible use molocide so the, then you can use this uh, molocide chemical that will eradicate the uh, snail if they cannot uh, be uh, hand-picked or clean in the rice field next pest that we should observe and control is the rat no? uh, rat uh, affects and target our rice field starting from seedling to harvesting time Rats have been a persistent problem of rice growers, especially in areas near forests and uncultivated lands. They cause estimated yields losses ranging from 5 to 60%. Imagine, that's very big. Uh, rats attack at all stages of rice growth but reach their peak during the maturity stage. Damage is greater during wet season. To control rats effectively, keep the rice fields clean and employ sustained baiting only when necessary make use of available rodenticides in the agricultural uh, supply and always follow the manufacturer's uh, instruction it's in its label uh, some uses uh, traps 
to control them some uses uh, uh, this uh, cat dogs or some eat the rats ta, to uh, control their population and also it's only very only it's dangerous some snakes feed on uh, rats so that's why uh, their population don't get uh, bigger if there are snakes cat and by uh, uh, when we when, uh, when we also use uh, traps, their population will be less or be controlled, or we get rid of them. Uh, next, this is uh, and control and their control are the following. The most practical way to prevent the occurrence of disease is to plant resistant varieties, practice good cultural management, starting from the land preparation and always remember to have at least 30 days planting breaks. The, uh, it means that we should stop or uh, let the rice field uh, have a break mm, by, by not having any plant growing in it various agents acting singly on or in combination under favorable condition cause disease in rice plant these diseases are readily recognized by their symptoms among the major disease prevailing are tungro yellow dwarf grassy stunt bacterial lip blight bacterial lip streak rice blast shell blight brown spot cercosporal lip spot and stem rot now the table below the table shows that uh, the rice diseases symptoms preventive controls and measures here is tungro tungro is caused by virus the symptoms is like stun, stunting of plant growth and reducing telling of course uh slight stunting parang nagiging bansot siya at kung konti yung kanyang tiyatawag na gipi sa ilokano yung nagi uh, yung tumutubong mga branches niya sa baba na nagiging uh, simula ng pagdami ng uh, tulos so para uh, mas marami yung kanyang bunga uh, we have also yellowing from the tips of leaves mottling of uh, the infected leaves with pale grain to whitey inter, uh, interbinal spots now, now we have here preventive and control measures Number one, this is very important. The symptoms is here, but it is very important for us to know the prevention, the prevention or preventive measures uh, and control. Practice clean culture to eliminate alternate alternate hosts, the uh, hosts like the uh, the grass, uh, uh, the pests. Uh, we should eliminate them. Rock or rock disease plants to reduce inoculums. No. Use only res resistant tolerant varieties if available. Minimize the population of green leaf hoppers by spraying appropriate insecticide. There are a lot of insecticides that will uh, kill uh, green leaf hoppers. Grow only two rice crops per year and practice synchronous planting. Synchronous means sabay-sabay uh, or uh, so that uh, if this occurs when we uh, when we get rid of them we uh, get rid of them mm, in uh, in chorus or uh, all of us so uh, there's no way that the insects or other uh, and other diseases may not be controlled uh, plow under seriously infected fields uh, plow under seriously infected fields so these are the preventive and control measures that could be done to uh, eradicate tungro now we have this yellow dwarf again it is caused by virus yellow dwarf and grassy stand caused by virus color varies from yellow to whitish yellow stand 
you know, if your plant is affected by this yellow drop, even you put more fertilizer, there's no effect. So there's a need to know uh, the symptoms of this one. So we should uh, so to uh, have lesser uh, money to be consumed. No? Control measure similar to that of the Tungro disease. Use early maturing variety simultaneously planted with the late maturing variety. Sabay-sabay. Uh, isabay natin to sa late maturing. Next, grassy stand. Infected plants are severely stunted. Propuse tailoring, stiff and erect dark green leaves. No? Conspicuous shortening and narrowing of blade, which are usually erect and with small rashy dots, brown dots. Practice clean culture to eliminate alternate rock uh, disease plant to reduce source of inoculums. No? And uh, number four, we have the bacterial lip blight. Now, lesions begin at the, at the tip or margins of the lip and develop rapidly pallor to the uh, healthy regions. So, these are the symptoms. Now, this control or preventive minimize seedling injury during pulling and transplanting states now plant only commercial varieties i have already uh, if you are interested to minimize the seedling injury uh, during pulling and transplanting i have developed or adapted a process by which uh, we, c we can minimize and pull the uh, seedling as early as uh, as early as 15 days and the injury is being be, uh, injury during pulling and transplanting is minimized by the way uh, we are studying this so that uh, if you are a uh, first timer farmer uh, you, uh, and you want to plant this uh, rice in your field you already have the knowledge. It is very important that you have the knowledge, uh, know how to prepare, know how to do it yourself, know what uh, uh, what step next to be done. Because uh, without this knowledge in your own, no, you need to ask from other farmers. No? It is good when the farmers know something about what he's doing in his farm but if the farmer doesn't know so, uh, much about what he's doing in his farm then it's, it's, it's so dangerous you uh, you are both uh, you are both misguided so now that we are standing this now if you cannot understand the, uh, understand it at once better repeat it now, I'm reading uh, word by some words here now uh, in my discussion or uh, explanation but uh, I encourage you to uh, to go back again and again and not just read but understand what we are taking up uh, uh, regarding subject about pests in our rice field so that you know uh, you cannot just uh, uh, do it once and uh, do it perfectly. No, in my experience na, uh, of planting, uh, it takes five to six times before having it perfect, before having more harvest in my own way of producing rice and other crops. So it is very important that you will not only read it once but read it again and again or read other reading materials to uh, add more knowledge into yourself uh, you will be self-equipped with knowledge and you will not only have your own farm grow with uh, rice that will yield more harvest but uh, soon you will uh, you will going to teach uh, how to produce more rice then uh, of course you will be having more money in your own production in in uh, sharing your knowledge about rice crop production 
so uh, slowly I'm scrolling my uh, screen so that you can see copy if you want to copy read it again if you want to read it again so that you will going to learn more about this uh, diseases that can be found or uh, occur in uh, rice uh, in, in rice production process there are there are a lot of them but not a lot of them can be uh, can appear in a single uh, se uh, in a single uh, in in one session uh, but uh, there uh, the, what is uh, enumerated here are all of them that can be found in rice farm in rice production okay now uh, here are some ways on how to prevent injuries or poisoning in the use of insecticide, herbicide, molocide, and other chemical that could affect our health. First, you can see here, no? it says here, store pesticide locked and out of children's reach. You know, children do not know something about this. So we should keep keep out of reach of these children. Then uh, next, wear gloves when mixing pesticide. You know, uh, our hands has uh, a lot of pores opening. No, so when these pores are open and deep or uh, touch insecticide insecticide will uh, enter our pores and it affects our body so we should wear gloves another wear face mask no to prevent inhalation of pesticide especially when applying the insecticide in our crop then after uh, after using insecticide or spraying in the farm always wash hands with soap and water after spraying because after this we, uh, you may have the uh, you, you may have your eating activity uh, drinking or smoking activity so yeah, it is important that you was wash your hand so that you will be safe from eating and uh, putting something in your mouth uh, those who are smoking uh, do not smoke when using pesticide uh, that is for your good health so that you will not uh, inhale the uh, mist or the air contaminated by insecticide okay so viral diseases tungro here they are yellow uh, this is the uh, appearance of yellow dwarf hmm. or or uh, grasses uh, or, or what you call hmm? tungro is not uh, the illustration is not here okay grasses stand then we have also bacterial diseases bacterial lip right blight no? i'll just show you to be to to, uh, to finish it uh, faster i'll just show you the the uh, the uh, definition of bacterial lip blight and also the appearance of bacterial lip right anyway if you are copying you just post it and copy the part where you want to copy bacterial lipstick yeah here is it no the pungal uh, diseases rice blast okay here it is how uh, they are illustrated circospora lip spot uh, they have also brown spot and helmin uh tosporium lip spot okay steam rat mm. shield blight okay shield rat so here are the important th important things to remember method of controlling peace and diseases cultural method proper preparation plant at the same time when your neighbor farm uh, with your neighbor farmers so walang nauuna dapat sabay kung pwede kung kaya nyo but if you cannot do it just be ready uh, with your farm and techniques and of eradicating uh, insect pests chemical method biological method use of resistant varieties 
and other measures to eradicate uh, pests and diseases. Thank you for wat watching. I hope that you enjoy, you learn, and you are uh, you are equipped with knowledge you needed in your own farm production. For the students, you should uh, take time studying this one. Of course, for now, maybe uh, you say to yourself, how can I use it? Uh, what is the importance for me? But like me, uh, I, I have also same question during my uh, uh, early years of living. But now, uh, I, I said to myself, uh, it is so important because the old will go will begin uh, our father our uh, grandfather our mother the, the adult ones will begin first and we will be next how can we till the land they left if we have no knowledge about crop especially rice production so good day, good day to everyone Thank you for watching and listening. And uh, if you need more, just visit my website, dpedketo12.blogspot.com. Thank you.